In this episode, Booth 42 is bathed in the luxurious tones of Malexia Montgomery from Luxuria, a planet so exclusive that it has a five-year waiting period to visit. She writes, edits, and publishes her own extremely successful magazine and is engaged to the best kerflugler on the planet. So roll up your towel into a pillow, lean back, and prepare to learn about face swapping, diamond beaches, and the name of our guest's fiancé. Shut up and sit down. And welcome back to the Hitchhikers and Appetizers podcast. Coming to you from Millaway's, the restaurant of the end of the universe. I am, of course, Horatio Zen, sitting here in booth 42 with my illustrious co-host, the only one I have, the only one I need, Charles Gardin. Thank you for that fantastic uh, introduction, Horatio. I am curious, if you had more co-hosts, would I still be the most illustrious? Well, that, that's a good question, and I, my answer to that is just keep upping your game just in case. Ah, good plan, good plan. Yes, yes, But yes. speaking of upping our game... Oh, yes. We have, we have another guest... Hurrah! ...joining us in the booth. Hurrah. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Why, yes, I would. My name is Malexia Montgomery from the planet Luxuria. Ooh. Oh, Luxuria. I have heard of Luxuria. I just sunk into that, and I just feel, just listening to you speak, I feel pampered. We have the gift of pampering within our voices, all of us luxuriants. Mmm, very good. Uh, I know I've heard, I've heard the rumors about Luxuria and, and just how opulent the planet is. It's nice to finally meet someone who can verify whether or not the rumors are true. Well, yes, the, the diamond sand beaches are real, are... Ooh. But some of the rumors are not true. Are the diamonds imported, or does your planet actually have enough diamonds to crush and turn into a sandy beach? Ooh. They come from the center. The entire core of our planet is all diamond. Ooh, how very practical. It is. The value of your planet is just got to be off the charts. I see Trellis is starting to calculate some kind of scheme in his head. No, not yet. Not yet. Maybe eventually. Oh, not yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I've, I've got ahead of us. Are people allowed to actually take the sand with them when they visit the beach, or do they have to leave the sand? Well, of, of course. Visitors are allowed to take anything they want. Oh. It's just that there's a three-year waiting list to visit. We're very, very exclusive with whom we allow. Oh, yes. That makes sense. So you have to be patient. That gives you plenty of time to figure out what it is you would want to take from the planet when you left, too. You can start a list. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A three-year waiting period to visit your planet. Well, yes. I mean, we are a planet of abundance, but if we let everyone come, there'd be nothing left. You know, the key to luxury is exclusivity. People want what they can't have. I must write that down here. Key to luxury. Precisely. You should have seen Horatio the other day when he found out that the mozzarella sticks were out and no longer available on the menu. It was bad enough when they would only serve you five at a time, but now they serve you none at a time. But now that I can't have them, I want them much more. Now, is that part of the marketing campaign for Luxuria? Are you putting it out there of just how much abundance there is, but not easy to get to? <laughs> marketing campaign. Oh, oh. <laughs> you touched on something there, Charlie. We don't have a marketing campaign. Either you know about Luxuria, or you don't. That's it. Oh. If you can't afford it, you've probably never heard of it. Exactly, exactly. Would that, would that be uh, uh, accurate? Absolutely. If, if you haven't heard of it, it's because you aren't supposed to. And if you do hear of it, it's because you were meant to. This is fascinating. Is there, is there a test of this? Or is it just just people just know? Someone just, say, calls up the planet to make reservations for a vacation, and they just assume, oh, okay, well, you must you must have heard of it. Well, you go before the Luxurian board, of course, and they determine your worthiness. Ooh, is there a test for this? If someone just says, well, how much is it going to cost me to come here, do they automatically get kicked out? If money is an obstacle, you probably shouldn't bother trying. 
My visit, as I was talking about this, my visit there has become incredibly hypothetical. Before I was thinking, oh, there's somewhere I might, I might go. This would be lovely. Uh, but, but then when it say so you have to be able to afford to go there, that takes me actually going a bit out of the running. And Travis as well, unless he has a stockpile of money I don't know about. I do not. I hit a downer note there. I hit a downer note. You don't necessarily have to have uh, lots of money. It's just that you have to be wealthy in some way. Wealthy in, in other ways? <laughs> Ooh, wealth, wealth is, there are different types of wealth. Oh, absolutely. Hundreds, thousands of types of wealth. Mm. Oh. Would arrogance be a good one? If I was wealthy in arrogance, and I just thought I was the greatest thing uh, to ever step off a spaceship ramp onto Luxuria? Absolutely. Yeah, let's take away the if part there, Trellis. Now, is there any sort of a uh, paparazzi? Maybe if I wanted some paparazzi to follow me around, uh, that might add to my aura. They do attempt, but they're frequently blocked by our 17 moons. Now, how does that affect the tides at the beaches? I don't know. I feel like it would be a lot of high tides. It makes the tides very dramatic, which we actually enjoy. You never know if it's going to be a high tide, a low tide, a medium tide. You just show up and you get surprised. Surprise tide. I like that. That's wonderful. Do you have water sports there? It is surfing, surfing the tides. We have all kinds of water sports. Our favorite is Kerflugel. Kerflugel? Ooh, Kerflugel. How's that played? It involves a board. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are three balls involved. Mm -hmm. There's a basket and a rope. Oh, okay. A board, three balls. Exactly what you're picturing is right. Yes. What else could I possibly be picturing? How many people are playing? Now, is it is it two people playing against each other? Two teams? Oh, it's obviously three. Well, obviously, Trellis. Oh, okay. Trellis. Trellis, let's think about it. what else would it be but three. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I just I just didn't want you to cause offense to our guest. Thank you. If there was any offense, I absolutely did not mean it. No, no. He'll he'll wait wait till later for that. Who is the best? Uh, kerf, kerf, like, would they be a kerflugler? Kerflugel. Kerflugel. Who's the greatest kerflugler? On Luxuria. Oh, that would be my fiance. Oh, nice. What is your fiance's name? Oh, I don't know. That's a beautiful name. I, I can't find out his name until the day of the wedding. And depending on if it's the right name, we'll determine whether or not we can actually get married. Uh... If it's the wrong name, I have to call it off. It's very dramatic. I've done it four times. Oh, wow. Uh, what were some of the names that, that did you enjoy? Did you enjoy this process? Because you, you've gotten to do it so many times, it sounds exciting and unpredictable. It was devastating, but also very exciting. Yes, yes. Now, is, th- is that how um, weddings work for everybody? Yes, you cannot learn your fiance's name until the day of the wedding, and if it's the wrong name, you have to call it off. It is the law. Ooh. Hmm. Do you have any names in mind that you were hoping for? What are some examples of names that you think you're looking for for your fiance? Oh, well, th- there's only one name that's correct. Oh. Yes. Oh, for each person? There's only one name that's correct for you. Correct. Yes. Well, that must make the wedding industry very lucrative because uh, a lot of, uh, you know, money put into getting everybody all the way up. I mean, everything's really basically planned, and then you're getting all the way up to the altar and finding out whether it's a go or no go. Yes, wedding receptions are very rare on my planet, but rehearsal dinners, very common, very luxurious. I was going to comment, I I was wondering, what happens, I'm immediately, I'm just thinking of this, what happens to all the reception food at at one of these, because you go in there and, and there's no wedding and there's all this food waiting. I'm concerned about what happens to that food. And I would like to offer my service. We give it to the moons. The moons? Yes. The, do the, the moons eat the food or they, are the moons inhabited? Oh, they are inhabited. The creatures on the moons. That's how they stay alive. Ah. They exist off of oh. our unused wedding reception food. Aha. Uh-huh. I can't help wondering if perhaps they might have a hand in, in preventing some of these weddings from happening in order to feed the population. I suppose if they have some hand in naming fiancés. That's true. 
It would take a grand conspiracy to make Very that happen. Grand. Think of all all that who would have to be involved with that. Horatio, I can't believe you, you're you're taking this moment to disparage the institution of marriage on Luxuria and not give its you know love its due. I I just want to correct that but all of this. My, my motives are pure. All of my motives for this come from wanting to eat all that food. I think it comes from your many failed relationships. That's what I think. I think there's a little bit of a, a, a bias coming through here. I think this is the one from Alexia. I think this is going to be the right name. You think this is the one? You think this will be the one? I think we're going to see one of those very rare wedding receptions. I hope so. I do as well. You see, I'm going to tell you... A- a very exclusive secret because, to be frank, no one on my planet is going to hear this ever. No, no, of course not. They they wouldn't listen to this program. So, I'm comfortable saying it. On on my planet, I'm known as 17. 17? 1738, actually. And Malexi is your off-planet name then, I guess? Or is that a brand? Yes, Malexia Montgomery. But no one can know that until I'm married. Oh! Oh, we've got a sneak peek. How exciting. I feel like I'm getting a behind the scenes. The man that I will marry has to be named Montgomery Malexia, and that's how I'll know he's the one for me. Aha. That makes perfect sense. That way then you don't have to change the, the monograms on towels. Social media accounts yes. uh, can be shared much more easily. Uh, now, what uh, are there any restrictions then on, let's say, Montgomery Malexia is your guy, when you name your children? Do you have to carry on these names or do you have to like, is it very random so that, you know, the the search for their forever love is even more difficult? Why on earth would we carry on names? They're individual people. They'll get individual names. Of course, Charles. How silly of you. That was just a question, I swear. So so every new name, so when when someone passes, then that name is retired. Well, some people are, you know, some people are very egotistical. Some people, some some beings uh, are egotistical, and, and they feel the need to pass their name along to the next generation in a thought of making you feel like they're going to live forever. I mean, they could, but if they were to do that, they would immediately die, and the person with that name would become them. Ooh, very efficient, very efficient. Out with the old and in with the new uh, paradigm. There can only be one. Yes. Well, of course, of course. I would accept no substitute. So then, ooh, let's give us some inside scoop here of uh, what is planned for the rehearsal dinner and the and the reception should it happen. Yes. Can we get a little? Can we get a little? Rehearsal dinner will happen, of course. Each guest gets a personal buffet for dinner. Oh, I like this already. I'm going to have a band and an orchestra and a DJ. And they're going to play together sometimes and separately at others. I was just going to ask if they're going to be like in separate rooms or, or yeah, if they were going to be competing uh, in the same location. Whoever wins, wins. They coincide. It's it's actually musical kerflugel. Oh, oh, very clever. Very, very oh, I love this. It's a theme. So incorporating, incorporating his uh, sport yes. into the music. Very nice. How nice. That's... Lovely tribute to your fiance. At the buffets, what's going to be on the buffets? What what is Luxuria's most luxurious uh, dish? Caviance. Caviance. That sounds lovely. What what is caviance? I love saying it. I believe what it, what you'd call a pasta with a cream sauce. Ooh. There are Ooh. four different types of creatures involved oh. and some minerals. Four different types of creatures. Well, it's important to have the minerals, especially if everybody's going to be dancing all night. Now, does it need to be the same four different types of creatures involved, or can you mix and match? Four creatures, all of them nearly extinct. Oh, well, that makes them more precious, doesn't it? It makes them taste better. Yeah, I was about to say, that makes the flavor really uh, have some some bite to it. So every time you eat caviance, it might be the last time. You don't know. That's lovely, because you know that you're doing something besides eating. You're really contributing uh, when you when you eat that. I think that's lovely. Caviance. It's not just a food. It's, well, I was going to say it's a way of life, but it's a way of ending life. It's a mood. 
It's a mood. It's a it's a lifestyle. Yes, not just a food. It's a mood. Ooh, not just a food. Ooh, and it rhymes. Now, is there a lot of uh, like lifestyle magazines on your planet? I would imagine, with everything you know, everyone there is not just taking care of the people who are managing to get there. I would think that looking the part, looking good, having the right accessories is all very important. So there must be some sort of industry catering to that, right? Well, of course, I'm the editor of the largest one. Oh, Ooh, what, oh, what's its name? Yes. Luxuria Weekly. That's very good. I like that. That's that's much better than Luxuria Yearly because I, I wouldn't want to wait that long to find out whether or not I am still current. And that's why we don't need an advertising campaign because everyone reads my magazine and they want to come. Now, are you the, you're the publisher and editor. You, you write for it too, are you? Assuming? Yes, and I'm on the cover of every issue. This is oh, wonderful. What a wonderful nice. tribute to yourself that you you got going there. This was... Have you ever thought about maybe changing the name to ju- of the magazine to just M? Well, then everyone would know my first initial. I can't do that until I'm married. Oh, you can't even have an initials? Okay, you, so you can't even know the initial. Wow, that's tough. That's ex- yeah, it's just the number. So seven, someone would say, "Oh, I love that. I love that magazine that 1738 uh, publishes." Yes. Ah, very good. So. Now, are they allowed to know your name after you're married, though? Oh, of course. Okay, so, I mean, I, I think M makes a statement. You know, it's, it's it really puts the stamp on it that it's your magazine, not just mm-hmm. Luxuria the Planet. This is your magazine. Uh, I bet there's a lot of space for some plastic surgery ads to go in there. Because uh, obviously... Ah, I knew he would find an angle. I knew the trailer. My my planet, Glandar, is the plastic surgery center of the universe. And if there's one thing Glandar likes, uh, it's rich people with complexes that can only be fixed through plastic surgery. Now, I have to say, I, I don't know how representative you are of your world, but you're very attractive, obviously. I, I, I don't see that you would have need of any kind of plastic surgery, any augmentation. Oh, no, no, not, no, no. I, I, I just wanted to counter whatever inference Trellis had made. Everyone's very good looking, but when we're bored, we do occasionally trade faces. So that's where plastic surgeons do come in handy. That would to, to cut the face off and put it back on. Yes. What, what would cause two people, I mean, you, you obviously would have to find someone who wants to trade faces, right? Is there some sort of matching service for people to find other faces? Yes, but I prefer the old fashioned way, just walking through the streets until I find a face I like and saying, excuse me, may I have your face? And if they say yes, then we sign the paperwork and it's done. This is my fifth face. Oh. Oh, I was going to ask if you, if this is a temporary thing, you're just a loner face. Oh, that's fascinating. That's So your fifth face, have you ever been mistaken for someone else? Oh, all the time. It keeps things interesting. Are you 1645? No, no, no. I get that all the time. No, no. 1738. <laughs> <laughs> and that can come in very handy should you know, your name accidentally get leaked or slip out. can go change faces, and you are once again incognito. And it's fun for my readers. Like, oh, it's a new cover model. No, it's me with a new face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a wonderful way to do it. Look, I'm back. Fresh new face for the spring. Oh, that's lovely. That is is does anyone ever do that? Like just just time to change seasons. Let's get a new face. Oh yes, every time that a marriage hasn't worked, I've changed to a new face. I find there's no better way to really get a fresh start. Just new me, new face. New face, new me. That's wonderful. New face, new me. So you said there were four marriages and you've had five faces. What was the other face change in regards to? Oh, oh no. no! You've hit a you've hit a oh, Trellis. Uh, that reaction tells me that was not the question to ask. Trellis, this is not a luxurious reaction. Oh, can't even look at you, Trellis. That was my first love. We we didn't make it to the altar because he refused to tell me his name. I'll never know if he was the one or not. Hmm. Say the one that got away. A cad. What a cad. He wanted to buck the system. He said that I should love him regardless of his name, and I explained that that wasn't the tradition, and I I wasn't willing to take a risk on missing out on my potential soulmate if his name was wrong, so he simply refused to tell me, and I, I could not go on. That's understandable. What? 
I have to ask, whatever happened to him? I know oftentimes the one who does the breaking up or something in a relationship winds up alone. Oh, the last I heard, he was traveling the sixth moon. I I don't know exactly where he is these days. Maybe maybe his name was the right one, but he, he did that. Tretless. Uh, to, to get out of it so he could go travel the moons and just be a, a rogue. Oh, so not something personal against her, just... He just had a wanderlust. Yes, exactly. He could have done that with me. I would have gone with him if only he had the right name. I just... Did he have a space bike? Because that's that only holds one person. Space, uh, space, space bikes have gotten in the way of a number of relationships in the galaxy, simply because there's no basket on the front to sit. And... He did have a space bike, and I hadn't considered it before, but that could have been the problem. Hmm... Yeah, the bad boy, right? Uh, that whole the rebel, a rebel can't stay in one place. He asked me to to promise that I would love him, no matter what his name was, and I I simply couldn't do it. No, that's that's a bit much to ask. Too much, especially on your plan. I mean, that's that's protocol. Yes, you know that's that's, that's a huge ask. Thank you. I do not blame you for saying, you know, sending him packing. No, I would have done the same thing. I'm trying to think back about your your magazine. Have you ever thought about giving relationship advice in your magazine? Oh, yeah. The most valuable relationship advice comes from those who are already married, who've successfully found their partner. It's less than 1% of the planet, so no one really wants to hear advice from someone who hasn't yet been successful at what we're all trying to accomplish. That makes perfect sense. This is... Why, we, uh, Charlie said I could both uh, give advice on how to get divorced. Oh, yes. We would be, you know, some, a little bit on the actual marriage part, but mostly about the being divorced or getting divorced. If only 1% of the couples actually get married, how is your population growing? Do you have to be married to have children on your planet, or can you still have, you know, reproduce even though you're not married? What's. You can reproduce whenever you want to with whoever you want to. Marriage has nothing to do with it. Ah, okay. Ah, man, so it's not a biological thing. It's not like you get married and suddenly this plastic strip is pulled out and suddenly you can engage, so to speak. Oh, no. You might not even reproduce with the person you're married to. Oh, my. Oh. Luxuria just got more interesting. Uh, um, It certainly did. What's the jealousy like on your planet? I don't think you're invited yet. Still not. You're still not invited, Trellis. Uh, no, no one's going to invite me. We could dream. I would absolutely have to go in undercover. Uh, and I'm guessing that would probably last about 10 minutes. That's right. Then you'd have to trade faces and get lost in the crowd. Maybe that's my in. I need to get there and change faces as soon as I step foot on the planet to someone who looks far more luxurious. I might as well just trade bodies. Do you guys do mind transfers? Just skip the whole face transplant and transfer my consciousness into someone who is really luxurious. Oh, that's easy. Oh, I like that answer. It's very simple. Yes, yeah, very easy. I think I found my in. Now, the trouble is, Trevor, this, this is not to be overly critical, but I don't know how easy it would be to find someone who'd want to trade, because then they would have to walk around looking like you. But they could go to one of the moons for a little bit. I, I feel like there's a, there's a whole rental opportunity going on here, kind of like bikes on your diamond beach. I'm sure they rent bikes to go ride around the diamond beach. You could rent out, your, your more luxurious people could rent out their bodies for people who maybe aren't as good looking as they should be to go onto the planet and they could spend some time uh, while the other person has to be in their, you know, less than ideal body on a moon. Well, if you want another body, just go and buy one. Duh, Trellis. I, that's, I didn't know that was an option. Well, it should be. Of course. You can buy anything on Luxuria. That's why it's luxurious. It's luxurious. I think the one thing I would have problem buying is pride. That would be probably more difficult for it. Now ego, you don't you don't need more ego, but maybe a little more pride. No, I got plenty of ego. Pride, yeah. not so much. Pride, pride, pride infers or implies that you might actually try to better yourself or be better instead of just thinking you're better. You simply find someone with a wealth of pride and ask if you can have some. Very simple. Let's, can we try a quick bit of role playing in this? Let's, let's, oh, okay. Uh, uh, you, you, uh, mm-hmm. be on your planet. Of course, you'll be on your planet, Lexia. 
I, I'm sorry, 1738. I don't want to give away anything. Leave the cat's out of the bag, it's fine. Ah, oh, it's fine. Right, good. And Trellis has just arrived on your planet and wants to try to fit in. And five, four, three, two, one, go. Oh, I love this planet. Um, could you direct me to the restroom? Um, sure. There are restrooms in all of the stores on this street. Very nice. Very nice. And would you mind swapping bodies with me as well as I could use a little pride. Where can I get some pride around here? This is my body, but you can purchase a new body at the body store two doors down. Really? Is it expensive? Not in luxurian terms. Not at all. Not at all. Thank you very much. And see, that was wonderful. And normally transaction scenes don't go that well. That are not normally that interesting. I know I learned something from that. It's, it's so direct. I love how direct your planet is. It's like I, I'm i not having to deal with subterfuge. It's just everything's available, so I don't have to try and you know, be sneaky about getting what I want. No, you just come right out and ask, and they will refuse you if they feel like it. We can't lie. We are physically incapable. So if we don't want to reveal something, we just don't talk. Oh. Well, that makes sense. It's good. The internal sensor just, just clamps it down. So there's probably a lot of people who are mistaken as strong silent types, but they really just don't want to talk because they can't lie. Perhaps. So if someone is silent to you when you ask each other, you can assume they're lying. Well, you can assume they don't want to tell you the truth. Ah, very good. Yes, that's ah. true, true. Now, what would happen, let's just say if you, you lied to someone, would you would you suddenly, like, your brain shuts down, your heart just clamps shut? No, we're, we're simply unable. We're unable. Physically unable. We know that if we were to answer the question, the truth would come out. So the option is silence or talk about something else entirely. Ah, ah, very good. So just it's just not going to happen. Masters of changing the subject. Yes, try, try ask me, ask me how old I really am. I'm not touching, I'm not touching that one. Horatio, you can throw yourself. I don't, I don't do it because I, I don't know what I'm doing. You can throw yourself into that fire. Yes. Uh, how, how old are you really? I have never been to this diner before. And that, that, that would be the answer. And so if, if, if on a form somewhere, you they ask for your real age and you didn't want to put it, you just put, I like cheese, or something like that. Yes. Had I not known about the silence and the truth part, I would have taken your silence as like a seething rage that was about to erupt on Horatio for asking such a personal question. You were hoping for that anyway. I, well, yeah, I kind of was. He likes to see me get attacked. Oh, Luxurians, we don't seethe. We just go straight to the rage. Ooh. Oh, really? Very efficient. Very efficient. Again, there's no fooling around on Luxuria. Well, what, what would cause someone to go into a rage? Lack of diamonds on the beach? Massage parlors out of oils? No body at the body shop? Poor service. Poor service, yeah, that's... Too firm a pillow, not firm enough a pillow. All of those things. Those are all good... They, those are triggers that I can understand. I can understand. But we... we I am so... I, I become so sunk into the luxury of this and the comfort of, of this this time with you here. You, you've, made, you've made our booth a bit of a spa. I was just going to ask, if you had to rate our booth on a scale of 1 to 10 of luxury... What number would you give it? That's what I thought. Mm, yes, that low, that low. Mm -hmm. That's understandable. Now I suppose it's time for our, to put it, our entry. Oh, our entry, yes. So time that for we our can uh, pay for our food. <clears throat> after that awkward silence, after that appropriately awkward silence. My first nominee for this. Like, who is typing this in? Am I typing this in? Oh, I'll, uh, I typed in the last one. Type, I'll, I'll type this with uh, The key to luxury is exclusivity. Oh, I love it. I also enjoy it because of the way it sounds. Just, it's very luxurious when it comes out of your mouth. Exclusivity. exclusivity. Luxury. As someone who's constantly being excluded, that works, I'm telling you. The mark of quality on many planets is that they do not allow trellis in. Mm. Or me. Some of them have gigantic signs just floating there outside the planet that says no trellis with a circle and a line through it. Are you typing that in? Oh, oh, yes, I should. Wait, no. Too, I, oh, there we go. I put too many X's in there. Now they are. 
you go. <laughs> I don't want it to be triple X's. No. no, no, that would give a certain other kind of uh, impetus. Impliant? Is that a word? Inference? Whatever it is. Implication. Implication. Yes. All right, so that's amazing. Well, Malexia, thank you so much for your time. This 1738. Sounds like, oh, God. You're not, you're, not marry, you're not marrying her. Don't get ahead of yourself, Trellis. My name is not M Montgomery Malexia. Don't worry about it. No, no, it certainly is not as Trellis Gardine. It's just Trellis Gardine. Or are you looking for a Gardine Trellis? Are you looking for a Gardine Trellis? Ooh. I could be. Do you happen to know some? Well, you're not going to know their name, so we'll see. I, that's that's a good reason for me to come s swap some bodies and then see what I can find out. Thank you for joining us for Hitchhikers and Appetizers. And of course, special thanks goes to our guest, Malexia Montgomery, a.k.a. 1738. I have been Trellis Gardine. And I continue to be Horatio Z. Until next time, keep your towels clean. And if a couch suddenly appears, make sure it's a Chesterfield in order to return to your present day and time. So don't panic. Everything you heard in this episode was improvised, but not everything improvised was heard. This episode of Hitchhikers and Appetizers featured the voice talents of Mike Gorgone as Trellis Gardine, Bran Peacock as Horatio Zen, and Stephanie Ray as Malexia Montgomery, a.k.a. 1738. Finally, Hitchhikers and Appetizers is part of the Improv in Action Network. Check out other great improvised podcasts and projects at improvinaction.com. If you'd like to reach out to Trellis or Horatio, you can send electronic messages to them at our galaxy address, hitchappspodcast at gmail.com. Or you can find them on Twitter with the handle hitchapps. Shut up and sit down.